Hello, this is Hippie Thrash and a Nats Pinbox channel at YouTube. Alright, this is something uh, that, of course, um, a certain someone, also on the uh, Force of Steel forum, was definitely waiting for this day. Definitely, this, this band definitely serves its uh, purpose for the U.S. Power Metal Month. Now, we had talked about Sabotage and Queensryche. And, um, I think there was another one that I talked about that kind of also fit in with the whole, uh, progressive power metal, uh, you know, side. But, this band is like, uh, uh, definitely is in there as probably one of the bigger, uh, you know, of the more progressive power metal bands. And are definitely were seen as an influence to Dream Theater. Yes, we're talking about Fate's Warning. When it comes to progressive metal in general, you either go back to Rush, or you go to either Sabotage, uh, Queensryche, and Fate's Warning. Now, now Sabotage were definitely uh, really were very early as well when it comes to uh, the progressive metal. Uh, side as well, like next to Queensryche, but Fate's Warning is definitely one of the earliest ones, and they even released their first demo on the same year as, uh, you know, Queensryche's and Sabotage's, uh, you know, follow-ups. So, and yes, Night on Brocken. This album uh, was actually, was written when they were originally under the name Misfit. Now, there is a song on here that is titled Misfit. Uh, so most of, these, most of these songs were definitely uh, recorded during those uh, times. Kind of similar with Queensryche, where the EP was recorded when they were still under the mob. But here, uh, same thing with Fate's Warning. They recorded most of this album when they were under Misfit. But they had to change their name due to the Glendanzig uh punk band, you know, the one that featured him and, you know, yada yada yada. So, um, definitely uh, this sound doesn't really break too much out of its demo stage. It sounds more cleaner compared to most demos, and I'm mostly basing this off of the remaster, but it still uh, sounds very, very raw in a way, but that doesn't mean uh, that this is a bad album at all. This is still is a solid album for a debut. This has quite a bit of great tracks on here. Buried Alive is the one that kicks this off. And to me, that uh, this instantly grabbed me from the first listen. Every bit of this track is damn great. Even from, uh, you know, um, um, uh, Jim Mathos and, um, of course, I got the CD here. Let's look at the uh, band members. And Victor uh, Arduini, something like that. Uh, both the uh, Twin Guitar Attack is definitely uh, what to expect from this. And both these two take leads. And um, they really do a great job. And uh, it really sets that uh, song apart. The Calling is definitely a, another good follow-up with some great tracks. Uh, Kiss of Death. Let's definitely talk about that one for a bit. It definitely starts off very melodic. At, at times, almost ha uh, for me, I want to use the word bluesy in some ways, the way that song starts. Before it breaks into a very new wave of British heavy metal rockin' riff. This whole album also, I'll say, is a very rockin' album. There really is not a whole lot of, uh, you know parts that really uh, turn it from not being too much of a rockin' album. No, we'll get to those albums, but even though those are still good. Uh, the title track, another great track on here as well, uh, very much a nice piece. Uh, S.C.K. Um, right? Yeah, I'm correct. S.C.K. I'm looking off the back. Uh, don't hurt me. So, um, it's definitely a, a instrumental, it's a very uh, acoustic piece, but it serves as an intro to Misfit, which is, like I said, 
uh, named after their original band name. Kind of in similar with uh, Jagpanzer, how they originally were called Tyrant, and um, obviously had a uh, name, uh, the EP after that as well. But not too similar, so I don't know why I brought that up. But this is definitely kind of more of a speed metal tune on here. This track just is very rip rolling in places. It just has a very. Ignore that. But still, another solid track. Uh, Shadow Facts is an instrumental, and this is the one that's very Iron Maiden sounding, like, uh, you know, like Transylvania or, um, you know, Genghis Kong. Or Genghis Kong, excuse me. Um, definitely, um, it's very, uh, it's an instrumental and it's got a bit of that maiden sound to it. Um, but then we got Damnation. Damnation is um, quite possibly the band's um, most Judas Priest sounding. Like, think more 70s priest than 80s priest. This is something that would have fit on like uh, either like, uh, you know, Sad Wings of Destiny or um, Sin After Sin. It's kind of really in that uh, kind of vein. It's really got more of a, like it's going to be a really soft song, but it just turns into a monster of a track. Definitely a great track on here. Really. But it's also then going to the last song, which is Soldier Boy. Now, this track act, uh, actually appeared on, like, um, I believe it was Metal Massacre 4 or 5 that this track originally appeared on. And it was a year before Night on Brocken was even released. So, and this is a great song as well. Uh, definitely a great way to uh, end the album. All overall, this is a solid album, but of course, better was to come, but this is still not a bad album. It's kind of like with even Rush's uh, debut, where uh, at times that album mostly uh, doesn't get a whole lot of uh, appreciation as due to uh, Rush's later stuff. And, and plus, even Rush's uh, debut wasn't very Rush-like in some ways. It was still very rooted in Led Zeppelin. Same thing with uh, Fate's Warning, Sign of Brock. And it's still rooted within the new wave of British heavy metal. Still sounds like, you know, has some Judas Priest, has some Iron Maiden, has a little bit of, um, you know, um, quite still that new wave of British heavy metal sound. It still has that. But yet, you can tell that it sounds like Fate's Warning. Even within Rush's debut, you can tell that that still sounded like Rush. So there's some similarities between the two bands. But again, every band has to start somewhere. This is just a solid album. Uh, let's also even get into the artwork. This is going to be a little bit of a uh, long review. As I said, this is not the original artwork. This is, of course, was used for like the third press of the album that was uh, you know, the 1988 pressing that was released around the same time as No Exit. Uh, but, of course, the original artwork I do sh did show in the intro, and then the second artwork with the witch burning or something. And um, that was definitely like the second uh, pressing. But, uh, and it definitely comes out that uh, Jim Matthews and even uh, John Ark as well did not really, and even the whole band, they did not care for uh, both artworks. They did not. It, they, they, and it was said that they did a album cover burning uh, sort of uh, thing in the backyard where, where they just uh, took the covers and uh, burned it like a, uh, it, it was crazy, but uh, it just kind of sh uh, showed you for their uh, disdain for the artwork. Um, even also, uh, Jim Mayfields has definitely came out that he did not even care for the album in general. Um, now, okay, uh, but it's not a bad album. Even John Ark as well, uh, being interviewed by uh, Painkiller, which I will post that uh, interview here in the link below. 
uh, for you all to check it out. Um, he definitely uh, said that the album is a bit... He isn't too uh, much of a fan of it uh, as well, but... Um, but uh, it's... But that doesn't mean that, that, that he hated the album, but he's just... Um, I guess in some ways really... Um, pretty much knew that uh, that better was definitely to come. But overall, this is an album that, that doesn't have to be, you know, um, you know, looked over. It, this album definitely deserves at least a bit more love. It's definitely a good album. It's not, you know, the greatest work by the band, but that doesn't mean that it's a, a bad album. It definitely deserves at least a listen from time to time, and at least some appreciation. So, with that said, better was yet to come. <clears throat> so, with that, I know this album was, did, was featured in uh, Scott Waters and Trog's uh, album for, um, you know, best fit, you know, top 50 uh, hard and heavy album of 1984. So, that means you have heard this album. So, what are your comments uh, or your thoughts and stuff? Post that in the comment section below. So, it's time to get on to the next album. So, until then... This is Heavy Thrasher saying I am out, and I'll see you on the other side later. Mm -hmm.